Hello friends and welcome to today's episode. Stephen Carter Jr. was pushed one day to learn more about his past. He had always had a strange feeling that something was missing, and now he was about to find out what it was. His life story came together piece by piece, and then he made the earth-shattering finding about himself that was never meant to be made public. He looked closely at the picture on the list of missing people, and a strange feeling started to come over him. He seemed to be looking at himself in a mirror, eyes that are blue and hair that is ash brown. It was his own face, and everything about it was just too strange. This picture, which looked harmless, showed that his whole life was a lie, but where did that leave him? As he understood the truth, he started to feel sick to his stomach. He didn't know who he was anymore. Stephen Carter Jr. had a bad feeling that he could never get rid of. In some parts of his life, things didn't quite fit together, and it seemed like whole parts of his life were missing. He knew that he had been born in the Hawaiian Islands on January 16, 1977, and that his name was Tenzin Amiya. Then he found something that made everything change. Stephen's normal workday had reached lunchtime. He sold medical software for a living, so he chose to kill time by reading the latest news on his phone. But today, he saw something that changed his life. Stephen was about to go down a road from which there would be no turning back because of this breaking news story on CNN. Stephen started to read the story, and even though he didn't know why, he was immediately interested. The news story was about a woman named Carlina White, who had been reported stolen from a hospital in New York shortly after she was born. There had finally been a breakthrough, and Carlina had solved her own case, which was very shocking. When Carlina White was only 19 days old, she was reported lost under strange circumstances. She was taken to the hospital because she had a high fever. Reports said that a mystery woman had taken her by pretending to be a nurse. Carlina didn't even know she was on the list of missing people. She thought her mother had taken her. Stephen's life was changed by what she said. Stephen thought that he had been given up by his parents when he was a baby and then taken care of by the state. When he was a few months old, he went to a shelter on the island of Oahu and then to a foster home. Stephen didn't remember much about that hard time in his life but he did remember that he wanted his own family. One day, he got what he wanted. In 1980, Steve Cartressar and his wife Pat were stationed in Hawaii with the U.S. Army. While there, they went to see a shelter. When they saw three-year-old Tenzin, they fell in love with him right away. On September 23, 1980, the happy pair made the adoption public and gave him his father's name. The people who worked at the school said that Tenzin was half-native Hawaiian, but some things didn't make sense. At the time, Pat and Steve didn't notice Tenzin's blue eyes, blonde hair, and pale skin. They were committed to giving the boy the best life they could. They gave him the name of his foster father, William Stephen Tenzin Carter, and his life seemed to get a lot better. The family moved from Hawaii to Medford Lakes, a wealthy neighborhood in New Jersey. Stephen had a wonderful life with his new parents after that. He forgot about his old life but he never thought it would come back to haunt him. The Carters thought it was very important for Stephen to know what his life was like before he was adopted. They even called the day they got him came to be our boy day and marked it every year. But Stephen was growing up fast, and he started to ask things that they just didn't know the solutions to. They only knew that Stephen's real father was Hawaiian and that his birth record had dates. Even then, there wasn't much to go on, especially since his birth certificate wasn't given until a month after he was born. One day, however, everything changed. Stephen's interest in his past kept growing as time went on. He finished his studies at Penn University, but now that he's in his 30s, he can't get rid of the strange feeling he's always had. He felt like he had an itch he couldn't scratch. He didn't know it yet, but he was about to find out the truth that would shake a whole country to its core and it all began with a simple DNA test done at home. Stephen's wife gave him a home DNA test that seemed harmless, and now he could finally start to find the answers he had been looking for. The first part of the puzzle was the findings. His DNA showed that he was from Scandinavia, which made sense because he was fair-skinned. But he was shocked to find that there was no evidence of his claimed Hawaiian ancestry, and his fears that something was wrong only grew. Then, in his newsfeed, he saw the Carlina White story. Stephen was getting more and more interested, and then he made the choice that would turn his life upside down. He looked up the database of missing people on Google on a whim, 
and his fingers were shaking as he typed in the birth date he had always thought was his. When he didn't find anything, he limited his search to people who were lost in Hawaii. Then he looked for his real name and found something so strange that he almost fell off his office chair. Tenzin Amiya didn't bring up any hits, but there was another name with a picture. In July 1977, Mark's Panama Mori Artie Barnes was reported missing. Stephen could not stop feeling cold as he looked at the artist's drawing of what the lost boy would look like now, after 30 long years. The scene was very unsettling. It was the work of a collage artist, and it was like looking right into a mirror. At first, Stephen didn't want to believe what was happening. He sent the picture to everyone he knew, including friends and family, and the responses broke his heart. Everyone was shocked by how much they looked alike. It couldn't just be a coincidence, could it? Tracy, Stephen's wife, urged that he look into the question more. But after all was said and done, did Stephen really want to know the truth? Stephen's heart was torn apart by all the feelings he was feeling. He struggled with the idea of just forgetting everything. He might be able to keep living a lie, happy in his ignorance. His life could go on like it had before. But in the end, his interest won out because it kept bugging him. He had to decide, which he did. He had to be aware. He took out his phone and started dialing. The chances of finding a missing person case that had been open for over 30 years were very low, so the Honolulu Police Department officers were obviously skeptical at first. They wanted more proof, so Stephen had more DNA tests done to find out who he really was. He had to wait eight months for the results, and when they came, the whole case fell apart. On June 21, 1977, Vietnam War veteran Mark Barnes and his girlfriend Charlotte Moriarty were in Hawaii. The writer was from California and worked in the tropical dream town of Haola. The young couple had a baby boy named Marks who was six months old, and everything seemed to be going well. On a sunny, warm day, Charlotte went up to Mark while he was working in the yard and told him she was going for a walk with Marks. Mark didn't think anything of it at the time. He had no idea that his girlfriend and his beloved son were about to vanish. Minutes turned into hours, and then into days, but Charlotte still hadn't come back. Mark was crushed. He spent days looking for his family, but never found them. What was wrong with the girl and boy? After three weeks, Mark chose to talk to the cops. He told the police that Charlotte and Marks were missing, but there were no leads. It was as if the two people had never existed. Mark kept looking for a full two years, and the experience broke him. He was waiting for news, any news, but nothing came. He spent the rest of his life thinking about what could have happened on that day. Charlotte had gone to the other end of the island before she was caught trespassing, which wasn't found out until a long time later. She lied to the cops about who she really was, making up a name for herself, Jane Amia. Charlotte said her young son's name was Tenzin Amia and made up a false date of birth. She also said that his father was a native Hawaiian, but her son wasn't allowed to stay with her for long. Soon after, Charlotte was taken to a mental ward to be checked out, and Tenzin was given to the state and put in a home. Mark, his heartbroken father, had no idea that his son had been in a shelter just 30 miles away. Charlotte was finally let out of a mental hospital, but she vanished without a trace. But this mystery still had one person who never forgot and never gave up. Stephen didn't know that he had a half-sister who wouldn't stop looking for her lost brother. She was only eight years old when he vanished, and she was living in New Mexico with her real father. Jennifer was upset when she heard the bad news, and she never forgot what happened. She never stopped looking for her mother Charlotte and her little brother Tenzin. In 2001, she tried again with the cops, and this time it worked out. Jennifer chose to go to Hawaii so she could ask the cops there again about her missing brother. With the help of a portrait artist, a picture of young Stephen was digitally improved and aged to show what he would look like now, 30 years later. Ten years later, when Stephen was looking for a lost person, he found this picture in the database. Then, the Honolulu Police Department's DNA tests made the link. After 30 years of looking into the case, it was finally solved. And what was the most unexpected thing? Stephen Carter Jr., who was studying the problem, figured it out. He didn't know that his real name was Mark's Panama Barnes Moriarty or that he had been thought to be lost his whole life. The new information really shook him up. He had solved one of the longest cases of a missing person in American history, but he still had to do one more thing. 
Stephen decided that he was ready to get in touch with his real family after the excitement and commotion in the media started to die down. First, he called Jennifer, who is his half-sister. When she heard that her little brother was alive and well and living in Philadelphia, it shocked and surprised her. She was finally able to move on. Mark, Stephen's father, was the next person he needed to talk to. Mark finally got the call he had been waiting for all those years, and when Stephen told him what had happened, he didn't know what to say. He just kept saying, wow, over and over again. Then he asked Stephen a question. Where was Charlotte? But Stephen had nothing to say. After she left the mental hospital in Hawaii, she was never seen or heard from again. Even now, no one knows where she is. That's it for today, friends. Please let us know what you think about this story. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon for more amazing stories.